Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And those of you who are on the web as well, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. So, have, having praised Allah and asking Him to send peace and blessings upon His Prophet, I now uh, begin our lecture for tonight. In tonight's lecture, first of all, let me apologize that we're starting a bit late. A couple of issues arose after the Maghrib prayer and that's kept me busy. We normally have only a small window between Maghrib and this talk. Um, but here we are, so let me get straight to the point. Uh, tonight we are uh, going to complete our recitation of the Quran and I want to pick up uh, the discussion on the content of the Quran from where we left it off last night. Uh, last night we went up to, who remembers which surah, up to until the 70th surah, right? Surah al Ma'arij. Now we have to do the 71, which is Surah uh, Nuh, uh, or as he's called in English, uh, Noah. That is a surah that mentions the Prophet Noah. Uh, and uh, many surahs mention the Prophet Noah, but this one is entitled such because of the prominence of the Prophet Noah's mention in this uh, surah. Uh, the Prophet Noah, as we have it in our tradition, uh, called the people for many years, but only a few of them rallied to his call. Uh, eventually, they plotted against his life and that uh, justified their destruction. This is why uh, Noah prayed to God to uh, save him uh, and, uh, and his family and also uh, to, well, he was uh, so fed up with his people that he concluded that none of them are going to believe so God may as well destroy them. And in fact, uh, God uh, did destroy those people by sending a flood. In the Bible, it, one gets the impression that this is a universal flood. In the Quran, one does, get, one does not get that impression. One gets the impression that uh, there is a recurrence, uh, there is a recurring theme in human history that God sends a messenger to the people, some rally to his call, many uh, disobey and turn away, and uh, God destroys those who disobey and turn away. Uh, so it's not like everybody. So if we come to the story of Lot, for example, it is that particular people who are, are destroyed, not, not all, all of humankind. From the Quranic perspective, there will be no reason for destroying all of humankind because of the sin of a few. So in any case, uh, that's a very important surah for us to listen to tonight and uh, to absorb. In fact, I say listen to tonight, but we've already read it uh, last night, but I'm continuing my discussion from where we left off in last night's uh, discussion. Then we go to the 72nd chapter of the Quran that's called Suratul Jinn. Uh, in Islamic uh, uh, theology, jinn uh, are uh, some unseen creatures of God. Uh, some scholars think that they are a subset of angels and some think that they're a separate spiritual creature altogether. Whatever the case, they are unseen creatures and uh, some of them are good, some of them are bad. Uh, they, uh, like us, have to listen to God's commandments and do what is right, but some of them disobey and some of them try to inspire human beings towards evil. The chief among them is referred to as Iblis in the Quran or Diabolus in, in the Greek language and uh, he is uh, mentioned as Lucifer in, in the Bible and uh, in, in general uh, these uh, are called adver ad adversaries or satans in the Bible and uh, in the Quran shaitan or shayateen. The Quran assures us however that these jinn kind, whether it be sh you call them shaitan or, or otherwise, uh, they do not have power over human beings. Uh, they can only sow a thought. They can, they can try to influence thought, uh, but it is up to human beings whether to follow their influences or not. At the same time, God gives us uh, divine inspiration through his angels, and we have the choice whether to follow good or to follow uh, bad. Some people are, are dead scared of, of jinns, and of course there are jinn stories and, and zombie stories and so on, but uh, from what we learn from the Quran, uh, we know that there is no reason to be afraid of these things. But if we have any re re reason to feel apprehensive, the cure for that is to recite the last two chapters of the Quran in which we seek refuge in God and we seek his protection against all kinds of evil things, including evil spirits, as we say, min al jinnati wa nas, from among the jinn kind and among humankind as, well, uh, humankind as well. Human beings can be dangerous to us as well, uh, and we ask God's protection uh, from all dangers. Uh, regardless of whatever their source or direction. The 73rd uh, chapter of the Quran, uh, so we deal with uh, this is now, uh, I'll, uh, uh, are we at Surat al-Insan? Uh, after after uh, Surat al-Jinn, what comes next? Surat al-Insan? 
Surat al Asan? I'm asking. Muzammil. Muzammil. Okay, so we're at Surat al Muzammil. Uh, Surat al Muzammil, the 73rd chapter, that uh, is called al Muzammil, referring to the Prophet, peace be upon him, who had a mantle. So uh, God is. Uh, is addressing him as, oh you mantled one, the one who is, uh, has that mantle. Uh, and, and is telling him uh, that he should uh, stand up and pray, even at night. Uh, even for, uh, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was commanded by God uh, to pray for much of the night. Whereas his followers are relieved of that as, as a responsibility. We may pray at night, uh, after the late night prayer. Uh, but what comes after the late night prayer is optional. In the case of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we learn from traditions that this was an obligation on him. God commanded him to, to pray at, at night. Which means that there are things which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was burdened with, but which he did not burden his followers with. And uh, in, in that uh, surah there is a mention of uh, uh, the Prophet Moses, uh, who is also important in the Islamic tradition as he is important in the Jewish and Christian traditions. So this shows the connectivity of the three great monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and uh, Islam. And uh, this surah says that just as God had sent Moses to a previous people, God has now sent the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a prophet to the people of the current time. So this is the prophet like Moses. And we know from the Bible that uh, a prophet will come who is like Moses. In the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 18, God speaks to Moses and says that after you, I will send a prophet like you unto them. So Muslims uh, believe that our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet like Moses, and more importantly, that he is a prophet commissioned by God with a universal message for all humankind. The 74th chapter of the Quran also addresses the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the surah is being addressed by the Quran, which shows that the Quran is coming from another mind, addressing the mind of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, the 75th chapter of the Quran is called Surah Al-Qiyamah, the, the chapter of the resurrection. And that uh, uh, draws our attention to the fact that eventually, even after we are dead and our bodies have crumbled to dust uh, and our, our bones uh, have fossilized, uh, we will eventually be resurrected uh, by God, right down to the fingertips according to this, uh, to this surah. And on that day, uh, people, uh, people's own bodies will give evidence as to what they have done in this life. Now, at one time, people might have found this remarkable and they might have thought about it in a, in a fantastic way. How, how would the body speak. But now we know that, uh, that, that everything we touch uh, leaves an impression. Uh, and, and we know the impression is often external, but sometimes the, the impression is internal as well. Uh, we have a human mind that, that is unseen to the naked eye, uh, or, or to human eyes for that matter, uh, but that human mind actually uh, uh, contains memories of, of all that we have done in the past. Today we think of those memories that are being stored in the brain, but what if the human mind is such that the human mind itself de develops its own uh, or, or becomes a person uh, which can survive the death of the human body? That is the belief in our religion that there is a person that, that is a you that survives, that is not your hand. Yeah, I mean, you, you say, I have a hand, you say, I have a brain. Who is the one who has this brain? It's not the brain saying, I have a brain. There is a person, there's an I, who says, I have a brain. So that I, uh, we believe, will survive. And, and, and that, uh, that I uh, survives with all of the memories of everything the person has done. So uh, now, we know today that if you probe a person's brain in the right way, you can relive all of the memories of this person's whole life experience, even memories he didn't know that he had. So if that personality that survives death uh, can be probed in the right way, that person himself will give witness against himself. And that's what this, Quran is, uh, this surah is saying. God doesn't have to bring evidence against people on the day of judgment. You committed this crime and you murdered that person and you did it in secret and thought nobody saw you and you got away from, uh, with, with murder. You can run from the law, but you can't run from a law. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the problem for people will be that on that day, their own selves will give evidence, will come with all of the evidence internally showing what they have done. So the, the case will be closed against them. Uh, the 76th uh, chapter of the Quran is called Surah Al-Insan. 
I think we're finally there, right? Surat al Insan. Uh, this is, uh, it, it mentions the fact that uh, that's, it calls Surat al Insan meaning uh, the chapter about human beings. Uh, and uh, God says that He created human beings uh, and, uh, from a mixed uh, fluid and in order to test them uh, who is going to do right and who is going to do wrong. In that same surah, God describes uh, the believers as those who yut'imuna ta'ama ala hubbihi miskinan wa yatiman wa asira. Uh, those who will feed uh, out of the love for God, uh, they will feed the poor, uh, the, the orphan, uh, and even the captive. So that's very important to, to notice the way the Quran describes the believers. If we are believers, we have to live up to these descriptions. Now, if you think of, of feeding the poor and feeding the orphans, this comes naturally in religion, right? What's the mention of captive? You see, for many years, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers were persecuted. They were beaten and tortured. Some were killed. And then they left that scene of violence. They moved away to Medina to live in peace. But the non-Muslim armies kept marching against them, trying to decimate them and wipe out the Muslim population. They had to defend themselves. And in such defensive battles, sometimes they captured one from the other side. So what should you do with the captive? This, this surah is describing the believers as those who feed the captive. Even though he comes from the enemy side. He was out to kill you, but now you've subdued him. He's not, there's no harm to you. What do you do? You see his humanity and you feed him. So uh, those of our brothers in other parts of the world who sometimes behead a person and, and, and post the images on the internet are, are not practicing Islam. We have to say that's not Islam, it is Mislam. They don't represent us, they're somehow corrupt, they've got it all wrong, and they're practicing the Quran backwards. Instead of following the Quran, uh, they, they are distorting it. And they're making people feel that something is wrong with this religion and with Muslims. If you want to know what Islam is, Read the Quran, and this is what it's describing the believers as, those who feed the captives. Uh, the 70, seventh uh, chapter of the Quran is called Al Mursalat, and that refers to the angels that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends forth. And in that chapter, God uh, says, "Why don't you make idil al mukaddibin?" And this is repeated again and again. Woe that day to the people who have been lying. And so, lying we we understand to be a, 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 a big sin in our religion. You know, if a person would be truthful, then he and or she will save himself from uh, or herself from many. Uh, mistakes and sins. Uh, if, if you just decide, look, from today onwards, I won't tell a lie. If that's your decision, you will see that that will save you from many sins. Because people commit sins and then they meet their relatives and, and they have to lie about where they have been and what they have done. A, a man cheats on his wife and then when he goes home, he has to say, honey, and tell her a different story. Give her a different excuse and, and a different story as to what kept him uh, away from her for so long. But if he's decided, I won't tell a lie. So now, he's going to think twice. If I do this sin, what am I going to say to my wife? What am I going to say to my brother, to my father, to my son? And so on. Uh, so, uh, that one thing, staying away from lying, is, is enough really to keep a person uh, very straight and very much uh, on, on the right path. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to understand uh, these uh, chapters of the Quran. That completes the 29th uh, juz. Tonight uh, we'll be reading from the 30th. And we will read towards the end and we will complete uh, our um, recitation of the entire Quran tonight. And then we'll make dua. Uh, Brother Waqas, it's good to see you here. Sorry we couldn't meet up, but we'll, we'll make an arrangement and do that, inshallah. Uh, we also have uh, a couple of members here from the Green Party. We have Dan and... Uh, uh, Jason, Dan and Jason, uh, with the Green Party, uh, we are honored by, by your presence uh, and uh, of course we, we want, uh, all of us want the same things uh, in, in life, we want uh, a good planet to live on, a planet that continues to be green uh, as uh, shaped by God for our uh, very existence and uh, anyone who will uh, uh, work for the improvement of our environment and for our society, um, they're, they're friends of ours. So. Uh, we, we are we're honored that you have visited us tonight. Uh, to continue then, uh, tonight we will uh, get into the 30th uh, juz of the Quran and, uh, and many of the passages of, uh, of this juz uh, deal with uh, three things basically. Uh, belief in God, that there is only one God. Uh, belief uh, in the life hereafter, 
uh, because that's what where we have to go when we exit this world. This, this life is not the end of our existence, but we enter into another phase of our existence. Uh, just as uh, the baby goes through many phases in the womb of the mother and then comes into this world and doesn't go back, uh, in a similar way, we exit this world as if this world is a womb. We get into the life hereafter and then we don't come back. And that life is the real life. Sometimes a person wakes up from a dream and, uh, they, uh, and one can't remember like what was the dream and what is reality. Uh, but uh, eventually somebody pinches us and we know that we're in this life, this is the reality. And that which we were dreaming out about was only a dream. It's only a fantasy and it's not real. Now from the perspective of the afterlife, this life is like a dream. And we will eventually wake up out of this dream and be in the life hereafter. That's when the reality will strike us. And that's what the, this last uh, juz of the Quran uh, is talking about with many of its short surahs, giving a very vivid imagery uh, of what the Day of Judgment will look like and the fact that we have to stand up before God and answer for the, the actions that we have committed in this life. So if we harm the environment, if we harm animals, if we harm other people, if we even harm ourselves, Muslims have a responsibility in our tradition even to take care of our own selves as an amana, as a trust from God. So the fasting that we, we, we're enjoined to perform should not be, uh, should not be performed if uh, that will harm one's own body. So if you're sick, instead of fasting, you feed a poor person for each day of the fast. If you are traveling, you have the ruksa or permission not to fast on that day, but to fast on another day instead after Ramadan is over. If, if you are sick, then you fast another day instead when you get better. If you don't expect to get better, then you feed a poor person and that compensates. So pregnant women, women who are breastfeeding, instead of fasting would feed a poor person instead. Uh, uh, children are not required to fast. Those who are too old to fast and too weak, not required, but they can give a fidya instead. Uh, to the extent that in the book Fiqh Sunnah, it is mentioned that somebody has such a, 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 a severe working conditions that they could not really bear to fast. It's not reasonable to expect them to fast, then that person too will pay a fidya instead of the fast. Or, of course, there could be other uh, solutions. A person may uh, fast on off days, on, on, on holidays, or, or you know, people can work these things out on their own. But the important thing is that you do not harm yourself, you do not harm other people, you do not harm the animals, you do not harm the environment. All of this is what our religion teaches. So, there are three things which are emphasized in these last uh, uh, chapters uh, one is belief in God, one is belief in the life hereafter, and third, belief in the messenger that has been sent by God for the guidance of all humankind. That we believe to be the Prophet Muhammad on whom be peace, and it is him that we follow and we invite the world to follow. So as I come now tonight to, to the end of our discussions, uh, I would like to uh, uh, close on, on the note of uh, asking you all to continue to support the center where it all happens, and especially those of you who are viewing us on, on the web. I don't know how much you know about this center, but this was established as a place uh, in which we can learn uh, about Islam, practice it, and teach it to others. And uh, for that reason, brothers and sisters, I, I do need your help. This building here it has grown to, uh, the community has grown and filled it to capacity, and we need now to expand it for the sake of God, and I want you to help us with that building expansion project. We've already started collecting some money internally. I'd like to ask you tonight on the World Wide Web to uh, donate for this cause as well. Uh, to do so, go to www. Uh, islaminfo.com and uh, click on donate and you can send us a donation by uh, many means uh, whichever it is of your choosing. So thank you all for watching me on this uh, series of talks this Ramadan. We ask Allah finally to accept from us all of the good deeds we have done in this month, the prayers, the fasting, the charity and uh, if we heard something good he gives us the grace to put that into action. We heard something bad he gives us the way to stay away from uh, the grace to stay away from that. He forgives us for our shortcomings and mistakes and uh, he accepts from us the best uh, of what we do. Thank you all for joining me in this series of lectures. Sorry it has to come to a close, but like with most good things, they come to an end. Only God uh, remains uh, forever. The Wajhullah, uh, that is the, the, what will, will remain for, forever. And it, it is that that we seek. Thank you all again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.